you're looking to get the latest updates from Microsoft 365, but don't want to spend hours sifting through the hundred or so announcements like me, stay tuned because in this episode, I'm going to be covering all the latest updates, changes, and enhancements that you don't want to miss. Okay guys, so diving in here, just a quick reminder, I do supplement these videos with a blog post down below in the video description with more helpful links to all these announcements. So be sure to check that out after you're done watching this video. Diving in here though, we're gonna start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. This first announcement is related to an expansion of the Toast notifications, as you can see here in the screenshot, giving you a message preview of the message coming through. This will happen around the mid-January 2026 timeframe. Next one here, they're introducing autocorrect into the Teams Compose message functionality here within chat. So it's gonna be autocorrecting commonly misspelled words, which I think is helpful versus having to do that manually, especially for a lot of us that type fast or go through that. That'll happen mid-January, be complete by late January. Next one here is expanding the forwarding capability I've talked about in previous update videos so that you can forward multiple messages up to five in particular from a chat or channel and forward them into one message. As you can see throughout these screenshots here, timelines on this one's mid-January be complete by late January. Next one here is for enterprise users of Teams with a feature here called Express Voice Enrollment. This is specifically for users to be able to enroll their voice for enhanced features for voice isolation, speaker recognition, and even identification in Teams meeting rooms um, as part of this as well too. And this will be something that you will receive as an in-product prompt um, when you're actually entering just the meeting itself. And it will have them speak throughout the meeting and it'll be an organic experience, but should help you in the other more advanced features of Teams. This again is for enterprise Teams users and is not available for education users just as a call out. Timelines on this one be mid-February and be complete by end of February. Next one here is giving admins the ability to customize the recording and transcript notification prompt that you would see as part of that disclaimer. As I can see here in the screenshot, this is something that you can customize in the Teams Admin Center and you can display any custom text that you'd like. This will happen in early January, be complete by late January. Next one here is another admin feature that'll help you troubleshoot uh, certain calls or meetings with any issues identified. This is something where you could go into individual users and take a look at their calls and see if there was any issues as you can see here in the screenshot and any telemetry associated with that meeting, such as if they had low bandwidth, they had poor internet connection, to better understand the root cause and hopefully troubleshoot any support issues that might come up, but also could be proactive on your end of seeing any issues that you could get ahead of with users. Timelines on this one's late January be complete by mid-February. Hey guys, if you're looking to save hours performing Microsoft 365 security assessments and have client-facing reporting at your fingertips in under 60 seconds, check out a tool that I built called Cloud Capsule, which allows you to automate Microsoft 365 assessments, and we mapped over 150 data points and baseline standards such as CIS and NIST. Within seconds, you'll have policy information and mappings across the entire Microsoft 365 suite in a single platform here that you can navigate. And within our baselines, we've recently mapped to the foundations benchmark from CIS. You can now see all of these controls with automated pass fail evidence and evidence collection with full remediation steps for each control. So if this looks interesting and you wanna run a free scan on your environment or a client environment, head over to cloudcapsule.io and run a free assessment today. Shifting into Microsoft Outlook here, this first one is an integration with DLP, which is a Microsoft purview feature, data loss prevention. Uh, typically how this has worked today is that it will evaluate a Outlook message at the time of generation, meaning if a user is typing up a message and adding a file and it, it is being evaluated by data loss prevention, it would typically, um, you know, you'd have to wait before you could send that message. Now users will be able to send the message, but it won't actually you know, send completely until the DLP policy evaluation is completed uh, for any labeled or sensitive content. Timelines on this one's early January be complete by the end of January. Shifting into the app section here, we are gonna take a look mostly at SharePoint today. This is specifically a data access governance new report here for site permissions for users. Data access governance is a feature that's available with SharePoint Advanced Management, so it's not available to everybody. This is an add-on SKU that is also given to you or part of Microsoft Copilot to help with the governance aspects of all of your data. 
but this is a new report here that will allow you to quickly identify the sites that specific users can access and what it's accessed either directly or through group memberships. Timelines on this one's mid-December, be complete by mid-January. Next one here, I mentioned this in the last update video, but Microsoft is now subtly introducing Copilot that used to be a paid feature into what you get as a 365 regular subscriber, i.e. business premium subscriber, um, E3, 5 subscriber as an example. But basically now they're introducing users getting the capability to access Copilot chat within Microsoft Excel, and you do not need an additional Copilot license for that. Um, interested to see you know, how it cross compares to the paid version now, driving some confusion obviously, um, but this is for any files that are stored locally. Timelines in this one's mid-December, be complete by late January. And then the last one here is also related to SharePoint Advanced Management, that SKU I talked about, that it's available as an add-on or part of Copilot, but they're introducing another new feature as part of that called SharePoint Catalog Management. And this is basically, in my interpretation, you know, without getting into it further, just given it's super new, is that it's going to use AI to intelligently um, basically classify the intelligence of, you know, sites into custom properties within your um, environment for uh, SharePoint. And then, you know, you can use that to understand where there might be sensitive data throughout your ecosystem in that sense too. Timelines on this one is going to be mid-December and be complete by late February. Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, just one announcement for Intune related to Windows quality updates out of the box. Now disabled by default, um, this is going to be introduced with the 2026 security update in January, but it's going to be disabled by default, but you can also now um, control this as part of the out-of-box experience if you're leveraging Microsoft Intune for autopilot and the enrollment status page um, as part of that with those settings within there. And this will help you get the latest updates or control the latest updates on your Windows device through the out-of-box experience. Shifting into Entra here, this was an interesting one. I've done an announcement about this in the past, but this is expanding cross-tenant synchronization into security groups. Previously, they've introduced this into a preview where you can do cross-tenant synchronization of users. And now they're doing that with security group access across Microsoft Entra tenants. So this is one that I'm not gonna unpack just due to the scope but I have a link in my blog here. You can check this out more if you are managing or are part of an organization that has uh, multiple tenants that might need a deeper level of collaboration or you know, this cross-tenant access. Um, this one specifically will help with logical access controls right, with security groups. Timelines on this one's late April and be complete by that same late April timeframe. Shifting into Copilot here, um, this first one's related to this GPT-5 mode selector. And this is going to you know, capture our user selection here and then remember it moving forward. The default one is gonna be obviously auto, uh, deciding how long to think, but you can have it so that it responds quickly or that you can have it so that it always responds you know, as a, a deep um, thinker you know, in that sense. So it's gonna take longer to process, but hopefully it might give you better answers, especially with things like you know, obviously deep research and things like that too. Timelines on this one's very specific, December 4th. Um, and be complete by December 8th. So by the time you're watching this video, this should be out and available for you if you subscribe to Copilot. Next one here is related to the Admin Center. They're gonna increase uh, or introduce more features here for um, identifying you know, AI readiness, if you will, within your tenant. And so this is a package that you'll have in 365 Admin Center under the Copilot section. In my link in my blog, you'll see more of the path to get there once this is available. Uh, but this is going to be basically giving admins um, expectations as far as where they could start to lock things down. Don't know what the full ex extent of it is yet, um, but hopefully it will help you identify where you have some governance before you start to light up Copilot across the organization. Timelines on this one's mid-January, be complete by late February. This next one was just interesting in nature uh, because it's allowing you to use natural language to um, basically interact with your inbox and effectively pin messages, flag them, archiving, mark them as read and so forth um, without having to actually type or click anything within there. It's all natural language. So just see how that looks. This will happen mid-December and be complete by late January. This next one here I thought was already available. Turns out this was not actually available yet, which makes a lot of sense for all the testing that I've been doing around um, calendars and you know creating events things like that but 
They're now introducing calendar search into Copilot. So even if you use something which is called fuzzy search, um, where you say something like, talk to me about last week's design review, it'll understand the context from all of your meetings and meeting transcripts and be able to surface those as artifacts as part of the responses. Previously, I think this got delayed because this has not been in the timelines that they reference as far as early October, um, but expect to be complete by late December. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, you could start to search or do some contextual search and find uh, calendar events that happened in the past. And then the last one here for Copilot is being able to RSVP for meetings directly within chat and not having to go to email uh, or Teams uh, to RSVP for meetings. Use case for it, probably low, but if you're just chatting all day, I guess, with Copilot, it can make sense and it can do that now for you. Again, probably piggybacking off of the calendar search capabilities that it has now. Timelines on this one is early January, be complete by the end of January. And then shifting into our last section here, this is the admin section. This is first announcements related to giving a native tooling capability or capability to be able to migrate from tenant to tenant. Um, if you've ever done those in the past, you've likely used tools like BitTitan or something like that to migrate mailboxes and OneDrive and Teams as an example, but they're gonna be introducing this. The caveat here that I explained in my blog is that this is explicitly for E3 and E5 users to begin with here, and it is only in a public preview as we begin in early December um, at the time of this recording. So just note, hopefully they'll keep expanding this and make this available to more than just the enterprise users, but um, good step in that direction here. Hopefully they make it an easy experience, but likely it will take some time before it can match some of the third-party tools. Next one here is for um, auto archiving for Exchange Online that's automatic um, as part of this. And so basically they're gonna institute a new um, policy within here. When mailboxes are reaching 96% of their quota, it'll automatically start the archive the oldest items as part of this to avoid disruption. It's gonna be on by default. There's more information in my blog to check this out, including all the PowerShell commands that you can use to control this. Timelines on this one's early January, be complete by late January. This was one of the bigger announcements of the past month here. Um, this is something you know that Microsoft announced in Partner Center, but expanded on it in a custom blog, but they're introducing new security and advanced capabilities coming to some of these suite offerings. In particular, we have the Intune suite being added to E3 and E5 customers, which includes things like you know remote access uh, management and um, endpoint privilege management as an example within E5. You can see that here in some of the breakdown, but then additionally, they, they noticed or updated us that there will be some pricing updates going into uh, 2026 here uh, for the SKUs that you're seeing here on the screen. I think the most interesting one to me is that standard and basic are increasing in price. So it's another lever to use in moving people to business premium. Granted, it's more than those plans, but if they're going to already introduce more pricing, why don't you just go to a plan that has more security features and a lot of bang for your buck? The last thing on this uh, chart breakdown here, as part of that, that is interesting here that they're bringing to the table is URL checks and Outlook and Office apps, which is typically Defender for the Office 365 coming to business standard, and then 50 plus gigabyte email storage, which me leads me and a lot of people to believe that that's you know taking it to a 100 gig mailbox um, if you're using you know one of those business plans, but we'll see as this goes into the 2026 timeframe, they're going to update us more about these offers. Next one here is related to this Defender for Office 365 integration with Teams, um, basically consolidating some of those external collaboration settings, in particular uh, blocking external users and domains. Um, so you can do that here now within the block list within the uh, portal. You can also still do uh, individual users within the Teams Admin Center. So this will happen early January, be complete by mid-January. And then Purview here, they're also introducing, as this last announcement, some uh, data security investigation. If you're not familiar with data security investigations, they're very new um, within Purview to help out with you know, AI and the Copilot experiences as an example. But this is basically giving you abilities as an admin to do a search um, and find information, but then also purge that information directly from within the admin portal. As you can see here for um, sensitive or overshared content during the investigations. 
So it's interesting. I'm, I'm interested to play around with that, see how that actually works and what that does. Um, you know, if that's an overshared file, like what is it actually deleting, right? Um, when you think about that, the timelines on this one's early March and be complete by late March. Okay, guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any of the features you're most excited about. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.